This episode is brought to you by Magic Spoon. You guys know how I'm super obsessed with eating healthy, clean. I'm constantly working out and Magic Spoon is the best post-workout treat. I am obsessed with it. We're all trying to eat healthy and better, but it doesn't have to be boring. Magic Spoon has the amazing flavors you love, but without all the bad stuff. I've been trying to cut down on carbs, sugar, unhealthy food, and realize I basically can't eat anything anymore. I've been drinking protein shakes, protein powder for years, but finally found the most delicious way to get my protein before and especially after my workouts. Magic Spoon has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. There's only 140 calories in each serving. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. You can build your own box or get a variety pack with available flavors like cocoa, fruity, frosty, peanut butter, which is my absolute favorite, blueberry, and cinnamon. Magic Spoon is bringing back two super popular flavors, cookies and cream and maple waffle. Yeah. Coming back maple waffles coming back permanently. permanently. This is legitimately as excited as I have been in months. You guys should see this, this stuff is right now. delicious. <laughs> Go to magicspoon.com slash bear with us to grab your delicious cereal and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code bear with us, B-A-R-E at checkout to save $5 off your order. Magic Spoon is so confident as they should be in their product. It's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason whatsoever, they're going to refund your money. No questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash bear with us and use the code bear with us, B-A-R-E, to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode of Bear With Us. What is up, boys and girls, and everything in between? It's Bear With Us. I'm Matt. She is Leah. Leah, how are you, my dear? Just finishing that sip of wine there. Um, That was not a sip. That was a guzzle. A guzzle. I'm... uh, I you're, feel like shit. you're I'm in your miserable. pajamas. You're guzzling wine. I'm in pajamas. I'm guzzling wine. I have my fuzzy socks on for those that are watching on YouTube. I am just in a mood. I'm, I feel like we're always real. We're transparent on this podcast and that's what I want to be right now. I feel like garbage. I just got my period. And I'm not ashamed to talk about it. I'm open about it. Ladies, you know, sometimes when you just, you have your period, but it's not just like a regular period. It's like. It's a cool period. Ew, f*** off. (laughs) It's like just the worst kind ever where it feels like someone is playing double dutch jump rope in your uterus with barbed wire and you just feel like you have no energy and everything is pissing you off and you're just it's like you feel like you're just like sick and it's just hard to explain because then you know like your boyfriend or your husband or your partner or your friend or whoever is like oh like like they don't get it they don't understand what it's like and I don't sometimes know. I just want to like rip your head off and you're not even doing anything but just trying to be nice and I'm just like fuck off. Well, I, my deepest apologies on behalf of all the males on the planet Earth that we don't understand what it feels like to have somebody jump roping with barbed wire because well I don't possess a uterus. Right, you're very lucky. Am I? Yeah, you are. It okay. f- sucks. And like a lot of the times, it's fine. Like I'm one of those people that I actually don't really have bad periods. I know we're like getting into this a little bit, but like, I feel lucky. I I don't really get bad cramps most of the time, like once in a while. Sure. But for the most part, it's like, I get a little tired for three days and I get like a little emo the week before, or maybe a lot emo the week before leading up, leading up to it. But like this one right now is just awful. Like, why is it like that? Why does it like very like that. Why can't they always just all be okay? Why is it sometimes they're just like hardcore and then sometimes they're like, oh, it's just a little period. And then sometimes like, it's a period. (coughs) 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 
Why is it like that? Is there a scientific reason or explanation for that? I would like to know. And I would like any women listening to like tell me that that this happens to them too sometimes. It's not just always like the same. Like sometimes it's more and sometimes it's less. How do you deal with me like this? I'm completely unqualified to speak on the subject of the actual issue. I have never had one, nor will I ever. And I'm completely okay with that. I have learned, I think we did an episode. So a long time ago, this was the attack of the hell demon oh, was of it? how you uh, do a 180 and yeah. turn into something different altogether yeah. uh, approximately every four to six weeks or whatever it is. 28 days. Sure. Uh, yeah. So I've learned to just sort of navigate around you. I realize I can't solve it. There's nothing I can do to yes. stop it or fix it. I just have to mentally steal myself to be prepared for the arrival of the aforementioned And usually demon. you're pretty good. You're usually pretty good. But sometimes I'm like, I tell you like, hey, listen, I know I'm not being rational right now. I know I'm feeling a little emotional. I know I'm feeling like this. So stop taking everything I'm saying or doing personally. Just say, okay, babe, sure, that's fine. Like you don't need to fix anything. You don't need to defend yourself. Just let me be emotional and then guess what? In a couple hours, it's going to be fine. Or like the next day, it's going to be fine. I'm like, you know, I really didn't mean that. You know that I was just feeling a little emotional. You, you do recover quickly. I will give you that. And it doesn't seem to last very long. No. But the the rage can be intense. The rage? It, the rage. And I know it's not like you walk around with a scowl on your face all day and try to be in a bad mood. But some of the times, the things that we have fought over in the past are like really intense where I, i'm like oh how am i not supposed to take that personally you we talk about on, on the podcast all the time i'm a dirty fighter yeah you are not right but every 28 days <laughs> you're usually good for a jab or two that go oh like that that stuck me in the, in the, <laughs> really? whoa, that, yeah 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 and i know usually those i i know beforehand and if right. i do know beforehand it's a lot easier to not take it personally. Right. I can just go, Oh yeah, I forgot. It's that time. Right. But if you don't let me know and it just sneaks up on me right? and then you, you blast me with something and I'm on the ropes and I'm like, Oh God, this is, this is going to be bad. This is not bode well for me. Right. And then you go, Oh yeah, by the way, and it's like, Oh, all right, good. We're right. So, so I've, I've not learned to, to solve it. I have learned that it's an unsolvable issue. I have learned to deal with it. Like a, like a flare up of some sort. Well, I'm very proud of that. Um, I do think I need some ice cream or something or some chocolate after this. Okay. Well, that's my wheelhouse. I can make that happen. Okay. The problem is you make a statement like that before God in the world and everyone listening to this podcast, you're thinking, oh, Leah just wanted some ice cream. But it's not that easy. What do you mean? Because you, I can't just go get you ice cream. I can't walk over a couple blocks to the ice cream shop and come back with something or order something on Uber Eats. You're like, that's got, that's got dairy in it. Oh, that's not this. Oh, I'm, I didn't really want ice cream. Yeah, I just want I'm a bite. Really picky. You'll order a freaking blizzard and eat two spoonfuls. I know. And then I'm going, oh. And then you eat the rest. I eat the rest, yeah. which is not good for me. <laughs> well, I just like little taste, but right now I feel like I could just go for the whole thing. I wouldn't that's even That's like, that's, you are incredibly indecisive when it comes to things like ice cream or ordering food. We had a discussion yesterday as we were out on a, on a day date, having ourselves a day date. quite a time. A date. D-A-Y-T-E. <laughs> Love a that. date. Uh, and when it came, it was the first time in a long time we hadn't ordered appetizers. Right. We always I order brought apps. it to your attention. The disgusting amount of food that we waste and it drives yeah. me up a wall and i'm like yeah. I, that that is like unacceptable to me yeah. no, and, you're right. and i feel like we need to do way better about and that we, we are we're gonna do better with that and i think we are something that i i really want to talk about i've been dying to bring this up because i've been really holding it in all day because it was oh, a topic no. that came up on our day <laughs> yesterday and i really am like pissed about it but i'm also kind of like trying to be understanding about it but it's also something that i kind of agree with but kind of like something that i don't want you to agree with me on you guys this is an guys, example of leah attempting to soften the blow before delivering a knockout punch. listen yesterday matt decides to tell me how selfish i am 
I am selfish, she says. And that- You have to give context. (laughs) That to me, I was like, listen, I know I can be a little selfish. I know I'm someone who knows what they want. I know what I like. And I'm not going to bend on things. And I feel like I've given in so much in my life prior to this, like the point of my life I'm at now that I don't want to bend. And I think that's okay. But anyway, let me, let's go back here. So maybe you're not selfish. It's more of a stubbornness. Stubborn slash self. I mean, okay. It's okay for me to say I'm selfish. I do think I'm selfish on certain things. I know I'm selfish on certain things. I know if it's like, like especially certain things. I'm I'm very give, selfish. Give me like an when example. it comes to like where I want to go eat or what I want to do for dinner or what I'd like to do after dinner or what I want to do with the day off. Yeah. Like I know what I want to do. I know that I'm like, you come up with ideas. I'm like, yeah, that's fine, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do this. <laughs> like, I know I'm like that. Okay. So what, where was the insult? What, that, that was, because that was exactly the context my, okay, of what I was speaking of yesterday. For you to tell me that I'm selfish. I'm just like, whoa, let's wait a minute here. Like, because there's so see, many things that I'm selfless on as, as a person yes. in the grand scheme, a thousand percent, you are selfless. It was not meant as an insult. It was by comparison because I would think we were even talking about these exact things. Well, let's, can, let's start from the beginning. Can we start from how it started? Uh, yeah. Please the beginning refresh my of memory. The story. So we were talking about, you know, having children, right? Uh, someday <laughs> I want to have a child of my own. And Matt has three amazing kids and I love them so much. It's great. And I, but I just do think I I would like to have a child of my own. I want to be pregnant. I want to do the whole thing. And Matt was saying that he is mentally preparing himself for that day because everything will change. And he says, I'm going to change. And I believe that. Of course, I'm going to change. I'm not going to be the same person that I've been the last 33 years of my life when I have a kid, you know, you have to change. But he was saying that, you know, you, you can't be selfish when you have kids. And I'm like, wait a minute, what? Like are, you're saying I'm, I'm, but I do know I'm selfish. That's why I don't have kids right now because I am way too f-ing selfish to have children. So I do get so it. So what are you mad at me know. for? I don't know. I guess I'm just annoyed to hear you say that I'm selfish. Cause you I'm like, it. I, was just I know, but like, I'm you. okay that I'm selfish, but for you to think I'm selfish, it kind of like really hurt my heart a little bit. But it was selfish in, in a sense. And, and in this particular instance, as pertains to how drastically your life will change right. because kids don't give a f- what you want to do. Kids, especially when they're newborns and yeah. babies, they need fed, they need attention, they need all the things. All I didn't the care things. what my parents wanted to do when I was a kid. I'm like, no, I want to do this because I'm a kid. You don't think about what your parents want or anything like that. But right. I, there's an incredible amount of sacrifice that yeah. comes as it should. Anybody who, anybody who tells you different is probably a shitty parent. You have to sacrifice a lot. And I know how regimented you are, whether yeah. it be training in the gym or how you eat or when you go to sleep and, and yeah, you know how much you love to sleep thinking. 12 to 14 hours a night. Okay, well, That'll never right. happen again. Right. First of all, 12 to 14 hours a night. Are you f-ing kidding me? I sleep like seven, maybe eight, if that. But I was thinking about this today and I think a lot of my selfishness stems from like you just said, being regimented and me being so disciplined with myself because of our, my job sure. and how I've lived my life, my entire adult life is always about like, have to be in shape, have to be healthy, have to take care of yourself, That's have to sleep, have to do. So I think that a lot of my decisions that I make in my everyday life, like, oh, we have a day off. I, I don't want to just go drinking all day. I don't want to go f- and eat hamburgers and French fries. That's and literally what we did yesterday. Yeah. That's what we did yesterday. Cause it was my cheat day, but I'm just saying in general, like I want to be healthy. I don't want to go out and do crazy things. Like I want to take care of myself. Oh, I have all day. Let me sleep. Like, let me do things like that. Or we're not going to like, when it comes to going out to dinner, no, I'm not going to go to f-ing fast food or like a deep fried barbecue place because I want to eat fried barbecue. Sounds amazing. <laughs> I don't even think it's real, but it better. somebody get on that right now. But and you send know me what a I'm recipe. saying? Like that is why, like I am selfish on those things. Cause I'm so f- disciplined and how I live my life because I have to be, if I wasn't, then I wouldn't be at where I'm at professionally. Do you know what I mean? I don't disagree with any of those things. Okay. And I'm not saying that it is a fully negative selfishness. I know. I'm right. It really is defending what it is. You're, you're, that's, I never accuse you of being hard to deal with or in the grand scheme of life. It's not like, oh, well, Leah doesn't care about anybody but herself. That's the furthest thing from the truth. I meant selfish in a sense that you do what you want to do 
most of the time yes. when you want to do it, how you want to do it, with whom you want to do it. Everything is Leah's prerogative. And that's fine. Right. I was just, I, I, I was, I wasn't even telling you like, oh, hey, get ready. It was me going, okay, I know how you are. Right. I know you better than I know myself at this point. I know how you're going to be when it, 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 the day arrives. If you have a child, you're, it's going to turn your life upside down. And that's why I don't, I'm 33 and I don't have a kid right? because I'm not prepared yet. I'm not like, and this, you having three children has really opened my eyes to like right now, like I get home from the road on Saturdays. All I want to do is sleep. And I'm like, Oh my God, I can't sleep because I have to pick this one up. Cause we have to go to football, this, this, all these practices. I'm like, all I want to do is go to bed, wake up, drink a bunch of wine, watch my shows and go to bed again. <laughs> like, but it, right, I that's what college that. is for. <laughs> no, that's also what you'd the be last- an adult and working hard and taking. And that's where the other part of our conversation went, which really um, like blew my mind when we we're talking about this. Like we got in a real deep conversation last night, but then we kind of had to stop ourselves because we wanted to have the conversation here on the pod cast <laughs> pod that was my attempt at trying to be cool um but you actually brought up a crazy point you were like because i think we're talking about just living our lives and being able to enjoy them and do what we want to do and that was where the selfishness came from but you were saying how you had your first kid at 24 i did it backwards yeah i didn't have a chance to know you don't know who you are when you're 24. No, no, no one knows no matter who they are how, how much you think. Absolutely Even not. If you want to pretend you do, you think you know, but you have no idea. Like you this changed is a diary <laughs> of bear with us, but you changed so much from your early 20s to your mid 20s to your late 20s. Never mind in your 30s. I think who you are in your 30s is a completely different person than you are in your 20s. A thousand percent. So, I'm 37 and I'm still figuring it out. Right. But but I took had took responsibility for right. the situation. Right. Did and, what you had to do. Yeah, and I have no regrets. Of course. But I'm just saying it was very different where I was 24 years old. I had just, it was a relatively new relationship. Right. And I was, I had been working in a tattoo shop, living with my roommate who's in a rock band and partying and, until my, my little heart was content, right. having a great time. But then it was like, oh, here's this new responsibility. So I did the right thing or depending on who you ask. And I said, all right, hey. I got to, got to straighten up and I got a job at nine one one. I got a, a big boy job. I was like, I got to provide for my family right. all while chasing my dream right. simultaneously. So I'm still trying to figure that out while I'm trying to start a family that I, I wasn't expecting. Again, yeah. I, I regret none of it now, of but course. it was, it was just kind of thrust upon me right. out of the blue. And it was like, Oh man, I got to figure this out. So my identity then became dad first, right? Husband. All of these other things that what Matt wanted was that like priority 11. Right, you know I, mean? I right. All I want to do, just like I want to go drink beers at a show with my buddies or go right. watch my roommate play and, and, and get messed up and just right. have a great time. But it was like, hey, here's reality. Smack you in the face. Right. Got to, you know, put up or shut up. And there's, there's a, I'm, I'm ashamed to say that there are a lot of dudes who don't step up. And to those dudes, you suck. You're not, you know, you're not doing your duty. Uh, but, but also like if you didn't at that time, like it's not, I'm not saying I would condone that or, but like you're 24, you know, like you did thing, you, you know, provided for your family and you, you were stepped right into this dad role and all of that. But if you didn't, like, how could you kind of fault that part? 24, how do you even know like how to be a parent or what to do? Or, you know, I'm not, and maybe some people at 24 do know, I don't know, but you figure it's it out. Just Nobody crazy knows. To think about, you can read right? all the books. Twenty four is twenty four years old. I, I read books about be, being. There's a great book. Anybody listening who may be expecting or has a, you know a friend that the, for the dude's perspective, everyone knows what to expect when you're expecting. It's like the most famous book about yeah. pregnancy. There's one called The Other F Word uh, for guys, and it is all these legendary punk rock icons talking about their journey into fatherhood. And that to me really helped because I was like, oh, I can still be a rock and roll kid I work in a record store, you know, all that fun stuff. But I was like, Oh, so here are some of my, my heroes and guys I look up to saying, Hey, my life changed. I was right. on the road constantly, you know, partying, doing God knows what. And then it really changes your perspective on things. Looking back now, I can honestly say, or I, I should say, I can honestly say, but I question if I would be at this point in my life, had I not 
taken the brunt of, of what I was dealing with at the time and just gone, Hey, we're taking this head on because you know, one thing leads to another, to another, to another. Yeah, I might've had a great time and and who knows if I would have, I, I, I would be willing to, but I probably wouldn't be in the situation I am today. If not dead, right. because I live in a whole different life. I was having a blast every night, too right. much fun. It was right. to my own detriment, but everything works out the way it's supposed to. And it always lines up and, to know you're at where you're at now and we were having this conversation you kind of are now because you you know you split the kids the custody of the kids sure. like half and half the time so now you have some free time and you're like whoa like this is the first time in my adult life i'm able to find out what it is i like or what i want to do and that blows my mind you're yeah, 37 it's crazy. years old I, I, i'm ashamed at times when I, it's a pretty common question people go oh do you have any hobbies what are you into i don't have any answers for you I have things that I like that are interest. I love baseball. I love music. I, but I wouldn't consider them hobbies. I don't play an instrument. I don't have a <laughs> you know a, a skin flute. <laughs> uh, <then> I, <laughs> wouldn't you be the skin flutist? Just asking for a friend. Uh, <laughs> but but you know what I'm saying. Like I I haven't figured a lot about. Who, myself out yet. right and i think that's as far as not only what what i'm into but what i'm capable of right. you know yeah. i changed career paths on a, on a whim essentially right. out of necessity right. and knock on wood i landed on my feet and i did okay but i never in a million years expected that if you had told me at 24 that was going to happen to me i would have said you're crazy there's no way that's going to be my life but it did here i am luckily i'm on the i'm on the, the back end of things and right. life is very different but it is it's very I, I, I would say daunting at times where I'm like, Ooh, I don't know what that is. Or if I like that, or I might hate it. I, I'm still, there's still so much like experimenting I want to do. But I think it's cool that, um, I, I think we kind of do that together. Right. I feel like I have Definitely. a pretty good grasp of who I am, especially spending time by myself all the time. I like to do my own thing and whatever. And, but since we've been together, you know, I've seen such a growth in you because I think it was also you know, coming out of your last relationship and everything that went along with that and sure. not losing yourself along the way, but just not really knowing who you were along the way other than like, okay, now I'm a dad. Now I have kids. This is one thing that I definitely do have. I know I love, but like beyond that, right. you know, then with your job and your career path That's having thing, to change. It's not like we have an overabundance of free time right. to have hobbies or experiment right. with new things. But now so. that you do, it's like, I've seen, you know, like a, huge change in who you were when I first, we first started dating, talking to who you are now, like you've just grown so much. And I think it's cool that we have time to kind of like explore together, try new things together. And you are, you just feel lighter. I just feel like you're so much lighter than when you first started. That's because I've been back in the gym. Talking. <laughs> also something I did of my own accord yeah. because I had time to do so. And right. I went, hmm. I have all of this free time. What's something that might be beneficial? I don't necessarily enjoy it. But you do enjoy it. I enjoy it. I do. I enjoy the the time spent. I like my trainer is the best. Our trainer. Um, Shout out CJ. uh, But like something like that, it's actually very beneficial in a tangible way to my life. Right. Getting me back in shape. But it was like, but no one for, was a nagging you to do it. Right. B, no one was like, you have to go do this, or you weren't thinking like I. Like you were just kind of like, I kind of want to do this. Let right. me try this. And I think that's your point. I never had anybody telling me I had to do it. And to your credit, never once were you like, oh, babe, you you really should join the gym. <laughs> it was just kind of like I knew you did it, and you did your thing, and you were regimented. But to me, it, it I had to reach that conclusion on, on my own. own, of my own free will and volition. I wasn't training because anybody else wanted me to. I was training because I needed something to do because I was bored. And it's, I'm seeing results. And I, I have, you know, a, a, another aspect of my life to look forward to. And and then it trickles down. You know, my, my diet's gotten better. And I feel like it's made us mesh even a little bit better i mean granted i'm by no means eating clean and and strict and like you you do but it's kind of made us in our coexistence a little smoother at times because i go oh okay cool yeah maybe i will eat grilled chicken tonight and oh you want to make dinner i know it's going to be super healthy okay cool i'll eat it and you do that and it's it kind of like 
it just meshes better. And I think there's something to be said for that, for anyone listening. If you're someone, whether you're a guy or girl or whoever you're in a relationship with, you can't force anyone to do anything. And I know that's not really like the topic we're on, but as we're talking about it, I think it's really important to say, don't nag someone to do something. If you want someone to do something, that's too damn bad. Unless it's something that's like, you know, very necessary with it comes to your kids or something like that. But I think it's important to allow people to come to the conclusion or realization on their own. If it's something they truly want to do, you can't force anyone to do anything. You can't force them, but there is something to be said for floating an idea. Yeah. Because if it's something that, Hey, you know, we're, I mean, how many times did I toss the idea to you? Like, babe, you would love to see, like, I yeah. just knew I've been training with this trainer since we moved to Pittsburgh and I just knew him and Matt would get along great. They just like the same music. They both like, like the same movies. I'm like, I would come home to you and be like, Oh my God, this guy reminds me so much of you and Matt's were like, yeah, okay. This guy basically. I'm like, you're sleeping with him. <laughs> and he, <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Anyway, so, <laughs> okay, so it's just funny that you would even think that. Um, but I just, you know, I would float it out to him. I'd be like, oh my God, like you would really like him. And I, I know Matt like used to work out. He used to be in great shape and you still are. But like, I knew that I, I don't mean that in a bad way. I just know like you did work out. It's not like something that is completely foreign to you. Right. But I would be like, oh, you should go trade with him. Like he's awesome. And he'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would just leave it as that. I would never be like, come on, babe. Like you really should do it or just yeah, well, let because, you do it on your own. And I don't know if I can speak for all guys, but there's nothing that will make me rebel faster than being told I have to do something. Of course. I mean, obviously work things are work things, but as yeah. far as something like that, that could be considered optional. If it's, if it can be taken as a nag, yeah, you're already no fighting a losing batter. Someone who nags. Right. I am, no no is nagging that allowed. Indicate authority. No nagging whatsoever. I'm, this one is making me feel better. Oh. Yeah. Well, there you go. We've solved PMS. Well, I wouldn't say, but we've added some W to the PMS. Okay. PMS avec W. Avec is with in French. Yeah, I've learned lots of French in the last, you know, year and a half. Well, I am trilingual. You're not. I speak French, English, Spanish. Oh my God, I speak four languages because I also speak the language of love. How awesome is that? How lucky are you? You are blessed, honey. Blessed. I am proud of us, though proud of us. I'm proud of you. I am selfish. I'm not afraid to admit it. Um, You're wearing it pajamas to, to the podcast. Things. I'm wearing pajamas. You can still see the tatas a little bit. It's white. Oh, well, there's that. That's They're actually pink, pink not white. They look white to me. No, it's pink. It's a Victoria's Secret. It's pink. I don't know the lighting. You're wearing a salmon shirt. Love that for sure you. Sure am. Sure damn. Is that what you said? No, I said sure am. Oh, I'm wearing that. a salmon colored shirt that I bought on a whim last night because I of the dog. I can't with this guy. Because I cannot with I, you. I'm not allowed to shop, okay? No, Listen, you I, suck ever. At I am not, I've been forbidden. We've talked about it before. I, I've been forbidden from shopping online. I can't buy anything on Instagram. My Amazon choices apparently these days are sketchy. Yesterday, as Leah and I were walking through Pittsburgh's South Side, we stopped into South this Side. cool little boutique. Uh, shop clothing store. I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, and we went in and were captivated by the dog. His name was Homie. It was the coolest was dog. My homie. Yeah, the shop's called Illegal. I'm going to give him a cheap plug because uh, support local stuff. But they were uh, they were pretty cool. And I actually didn't need the shirt. I wasn't even really considering buying anything. I was sitting on the couch making out with Homie. Basically, he was just like all up on me. And then Matt was like, oh, I guess I need to buy something. <laughs> yeah, otherwise, I was going to lose my girlfriend to a dog. So I bought this swank salmon colored shirt. The salmon color. Anywho, you know what? I think it's time for a little. Couldn't agree more. Here's the mail that never fails. It makes me want to wag my tail. When it comes, I want to wail. <laughs> Man. All right. I like that you went into like Kiefer Southern and the Lost Boys. Like, like, what was that? All right. Here we go. (laughs) 
I really don't know what's wrong with me. I'm so scared. I can't wait to go to bed. It's like what? 7 PM. And I'm about to pass out. It's eight. Anywho, question number one, honey. Hey, I like those questions here. Ah, question number one. Hey, Matt and Leah. Are you going to speak like that for the rest of the show? <laughs> what, I don't even understand you what you're saying. if I did? Yeah. Okay. I am on a roller coaster. <laughs> I am on a Are roller. you a 1920s gangster? <laughs> hey, what do you know about that, huh? I am. Top of the morning to you. Okay, laddie. <laughs> That's Irish. I wish I was asleep like, right now. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's getting thick in here. Okay. Compose yourself, Cher. All right. You shouldn't have said that because now I want to sing. I am in a roller coaster of a relationship for 13 years. We have two children together. Lately, I've had strong thoughts and desires to be with a woman. As I'm writing this, I am wondering where I was going with this. And here's what I came up with. I feel stuck. I'm a stay-at-home mom supported by him. I don't want to be a couple anymore, but I literally feel like I don't have a choice because I don't have an income or a career or my own home. My house has both our names on it, but he mostly pays. I literally don't see how I can do anything. If you guys have any thoughts or ideas as an outside perspective, I'd like to help. I no longer have friends because of our toxic relationship over the years. And I feel like I can't explain or tell my family any of this unless I have a solid plan. I can't depend on any family for financial help. If you read this on there, please don't leave me. Of course not. Um, if you respond, thanks for the help. All right. This is a lot here. This is what I'm going to say. This is something my mom always instilled in me from a very young age. Never, ever, ever, ever rely on a partner for money. Ever. You always have to be able to take care of yourself. Whether you're with a man or a woman, make sure you have your own finances. Make sure you do what you can do and what you have to do in order to know you can be on your own. That way, when you're with someone, you're with them because you want to be with them, not because you need them or have to stay. And I think that is so important. That's the best advice my mom ever, ever gave me. And that's something that I've always had in the back of my mind my entire life. And I that's why I just stay so motivated and do whatever I have to do in order to stay ahead because I never, I want to be with you because I want to be with you, not because you're taking care of me. And I'm like, oh my God, well, I don't even think I want to be with him anymore, but how, how else am I going to survive? Mostly and because I think they called me tripod in high school. Okay. Well, I think there are so many women out there that are in the same position where they feel like stuck because they don't have their own finances or their own job. And I think if I were you, I would figure out what it is you want to do. What is your passion? Where's something? Oh my God, my nose is so itchy. Find some, find something that you can do that will be able to um, fulfill you financially. And even if it isn't something you absolutely love for now, it could be something that you can put your money away and stack your money and save so you can get out of this situation because nothing is worse than being in a situation you don't want to be in. I think it's very important to be happy. Life is so damn short. So you don't want to be stuck somewhere you don't want to be. I will add on. We always preach about the importance of communication. After 13 years, two kids, if you're 100% sure your mind is made up, nobody's going to change that for you. But if your husband is unaware of how you're feeling, then then you're you're you know cutting off your nose to spite your face. Talk to him. If you guys have had this conversation and it's gone nowhere, then by all means, it's time to explore other options. Make sure he knows. Come up with a potential solution. Maybe you get a part-time job for now because just breaking the monotony of being a housewife all day after day, yeah. that, that might fulfill you. That might give you that, something that you're lacking and you might realize, oh, wow, this isn't so bad after all. Could be the total opposite. You might find this job and go, oh, my God, now I know I need to work. I don't need this dude and, and move on. But you, you have to make sure you at least have that conversation. You guys are on the same page. And there are a lot of options. You can ease your way into it. You're not going to get most likely a job after being a housewife for 13 years. That's some you know big high powered executive job. As long as you can just are willing to do you know what what's available to you to to provide for yourself or or you know your family or whatever you're doing. There's no shame in any of that if it's going to help you better your life and feel more of a sense of worth. But again, make sure that 
you guys have exhausted the options and had the conversation and know he knows how you're feeling because yeah, you don't listen, want to spring that on. Him. I'm gonna tell you a secret about guys. Sometimes we're shitty listeners. Dare I say most of the time we're shitty listeners. And sometimes you have to grab them by the collar of their shirt and say, Hey, listen, stupid. I'm not happy. I need this. I need that. I need the other thing. And I think you would be shocked at how many guys will go, oh my God, I had no idea. I'm so sorry. How do we fix this? What can I do? Can I help you? If that's the case, then then good on for both of you. Uh, and if, you, if this is something you've already done and I'm preaching to the choir, then again, you just, you know, uh, buckle down and do what you got to do to provide for yourself and slowly, but surely, you know, uh, bring, bring about a change, but make sure you've tried everything else first. I do like that answer. That's true. I guess I was thinking so far ahead and being like, okay, you're done. You got to get out. Right. Well, and, and it might be, but uh, you're right. You, you should communicate. And if it's something that you haven't spoken about, that's not fair. You're in a right. marriage, you have kids, you should definitely have this conversation, but maybe she's way beyond that. We're not sure. And that's, yeah. it's, that's entirely possible. We don't know. Uh, but, but again, I mean, with the information given, there's a couple uh, suggestions for you. So I hope it all works out. Um, question. Hey, we got another question here, Sonny. What do you think? Oh, should I, uh, should I read it or what? Or you think I should maybe just like. <laughs> You've know. completely become a cartoon character. What do you mean there, Sonny? I am a little cartoon character. You got a problem with that, huh? What are you going to do about it? Say it to my face, bitch. <laughs> what the fuck? Here we go. Uh, what do you think of all this question here? Uh, okay. What do you think, Maddie? Question number two, honey. Hey, Matt and Leah. <laughs> my name is Martin. I am a fan of you guys all the way from Sri Lanka. Is it Sri Lanka? I believe it's Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Shri, I believe it's Sri. Sri Lanka. Apologies if we're mispronouncing wow, your native we have fans land. in Sri Lanka. We're taking over the world, baby. Woo! Let's shimmy all over the place. All right. Your podcast. We just took over Guam, too. <laughs> oh, I tried. You're stupid. Your podcast helps me get through the hectic life of a med student. Here's a question for the both of you. If you guys had to pick a tattoo for each other, what would it be? Matt, go easy on Leah. Ha ha ha. Thanks for all the laughs. That's an interesting question. That's really funny. What would you what would you pick for me? For real, for real. Like something I would okay, actually. Okay, so that's that's where my mind went. I I would like I don't want I, a picture need, of Jaden Smith on my thigh. Like uh an impractical yeah, joker. Old Prince Herb. <laughs> uh I I'm going to, I'm going to actually surprise you and go logical and something that you might actually even consider because I've been seeing a lot of them lately and I actually considered one or a two lot of them. them lately. Uh, yeah. On Instagram pages, I follow, uh, there, there are a few artists right now that do these amazing realistic gems that look like they're either set into your skin or like they, they're, they look like you, something you bought. And I know how you're like really, crystal? The, yeah, like crystals, like, like some of them, I mean, I've seen turquoise, I've seen different crystals and obsidians and things like that, but they're tattooed in you and they look awesome. They look like you have a jewel in you. And because I didn't have enough time to think of something funny, that to me is something I'd be like, oh, I think Leah would, would actually consider that. Interesting. See, there you go. You guys, I'm sorry, Martin. I know you, you were expecting me to crush this one out of the park, but I'm, I'm out of gas today. I think I have one that you would actually get there okay so that's not a very because you have like narrow the most random subject. i just got a goddamn godzilla tattoo yeah, I for know, the hell exactly of i was actually thinking it'd be really funny if you got the reptar from um rugrats yeah would you get that i feel like you would i mean you i like rugrats i like rugrats i would much rather get like probably another nicktoon tattoo like i would get a ren and stimpy tattoo i think you should get what if i get ren on one cheek and stimpy on the other Oh, that reminds me of my dad. My dad used to always tell this joke. This is so embarrassing. We would always tell this joke. I know what it. I know, you what, know it what it is. is? I know, go Did he for say it. it to you? No, no, he didn't. But I know. I'm sure it's the same dad joke. Where that's been he told. said, "Oh yeah, I got a bunch of tattoos." And like, because he has a few on his arms, right? And he'd be like, "Oh, you should see the one I have on my leg. It's one <laughs> on one leg. It's a squirrel. Christmas tree. Oh." No, oh. on one leg it's a squirrel climbing up my leg, on the other, on the other leg it's a squirrel going down with two nuts in his mouth. 
<laughs> he tells that joke at family functions. Okay. That's my dad. Oh, our, our, What were our, you going to say? The Christmas tree. Oh, our, one, uh, our, our legendary late friend, Pat, used to always recite, uh, hey, you know, I got tattoos too. I got a Christmas tree on one thigh and a turkey on the other. Why don't you come visit me between the holidays? Oh my God. I've never heard that. Oh, that was a, that was a class. That's funny. Or W's on each butt cheek. W's on each butt cheek. Yeah. Watch me grab my ankles and say, wow. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> I didn't make that it up. That is so gross. I know. I just grossed out everybody in the car. I'm sorry. I'm dying. I'm surprised you would even say that. He doesn't like anything to do with poop. Okay. We're not talking about I would say, wow, that. we no. could actually have it say, Look, stop. Woo! We're not going down like that route. I. Don't do this to me. It's time to go. We have to go watch White Lotus in bed. Oh, my God. Yes. I'm so excited. You guys, thank you so much for always being with us and um, supporting you, us. Bearing please, with us. And bearing with Oh, I didn't want to say that because I said that at the end. Oh. But if you guys could please go subscribe, give us a review, stars, like, comment, everything on our Instagram. Fill our Refill our mailbag. Yeah. Refill the we mailbag. Need some more We've had some awesome questions. We still have a few that we haven't gotten to. But please refill the mailbag. Bear with us pod at gmail.com and if you sent us a question in the past and we haven't gotten to it's worth resending yeah, resend it because it, i got lost in the mix yeah it's it's actually it sounds like we're really big time Ew, like, no. oh look how full our mailbag is uh look at the size of my mailbag look at the size of my mailbags good lord <laughs> goodbye forever hey what do you know about that huh top of the morning to you okay laddie